Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. This is part five? We're in five now, right? Five. Five guys. Yeah, part five of our multi-part series all about getting started with XAML and .NET MAUI. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson. I'm your co-host, Robert Green. And I'm Paul Sheriff. Awesome. And in the last episode, we talked all about layouts, even more with the additions of flex layout, horizontal layout, and vertical layout. And, you know, that made the app kind of pretty, but we can make it better with the power of styles, which is what we're going to be talking about in this episode. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, so let's, let's kind of start out by coming over here and doing some styles right here. So the way you put styles, you do them in the resources section. So within a content page, you can do resources. You can even do it within a grid, for example. So let's do that, grid dot resources. So you can put resources that are just for the grid and everything within the grid, or we can do it up at the content page level, which means that anything, the grid, the label, the entries, anything underneath that would also get those examples. So let's take and put in some styles and see what this looks like. So what we do is we do a style element, target type equals, and then this is one of the control types. So you type a grid, you type a label, so it's really nice. And call sense will really help you out here. And then once you have the target type here within the style and before the closing tag for that style, you can put one or more setters. Now, if you remember our grid, our grid actually had column spacing 10, row spacing 10, margin 10, padding 10. We can take all of those out now because I have said that any grid on this page, right, is going to have column spacing 10. See that right here? Row spacing 10, margin 10, padding 10. Pretty easy. Now, you remember the labels? Our yeah. labels were kind of at the top up here. So mm -hmm. we can change that just by setting for all labels on this content page, set the vertical text alignment to center. If you don't want them centered, you want them at the end, you can do that as well. I like them centered. That is like Robert was saying in the last episode, hey, find what you like and then just create your styles for that. <clears throat> so and then you want it, sorry, if you've got one grid on the page, then you can, it doesn't really matter whether you set the properties of the grid or a style of the grid or a style at the top of the content page. That is correct. So this case, though, because you've got multiple labels, you, this is already a giant win to at the top of the page, say all labels on this page will now be centered. And then every single label, the ones you have, any you add automatically get that so correct but on this page and then right i know where you're going so hang on to that because <laughs> we're going to get there <laughs> now the last target type is the horizontal stack layout and if you remember down here in the horizontal stack layout i had that spacing of five i can now eliminate all of those because i've now set that to be spacing five on all horizontal layouts on this page, with this setter right there, okay? So as you can see, our page now looks a little better. Things are a little bit more lined up, okay? Um, you know, if you look at the label and the checkbox, see now those are nicely lined up as well. Remember, those were all wonky too. So a little bit better there. Now this label here obviously is staying centered even though it wrapped. You can see how it's in the center of all of these. So that's kind of nice. So again, all of this is just like a flow layout you'd see in HTML. And then you could also, uh, I don't know if this is leading into it, but you could also set the width of the buttons in case you wanted all of your buttons to be the same width. Absolutely. So we would do a style with a target type of button. We would do a setter with a property of width request. We're requesting the width. Doesn't mean we're going to get it. We're requesting it. And that's going to be based on whatever that screen size is, right? And we could say something like maybe 50 or something, right? Uh, maybe a little more. 
There you go. Okay. But yes, that's absolutely what we could do if you want all of them to be the exact same width. So now this is fine for this one page, but what I mean, how many people have written an app with just a single page? <laughs> Probably not very often. Okay. So let's cut all of these out of here. And now, if you remember, I talked about app.xaml. App.xaml is where we can now add styles that are global across okay, the whole um, application. Mm -hmm. so what we do is within the resource dictionary here, okay, we add these styles and look, everything just came right back. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if I cut them out of here again, watch that just to make sure you can see it. See, now we're back to the way it was before. But when I add these back in now at the global level, they're there. And now any page that I add will also get these resources, these styles. Yep. And then you can reuse, once you have your look and feel, you can reuse these styles across all apps you build. So now you get consistency not only within the app, but across all the apps you do. Right. And I'll show you where you put that in just a second. However, one thing to note. So at the application level, this app.xaml, right, is where I have this. If I want to override something, I can still do it by changing a style here closer to the where I want to affect it. So on the labels on this page, I want to have the vertical text alignment set to end. So you can see now they're all at the end on this page. If I have five other pages though, they are still going to get this one right, right here, okay, because that's at the application level. So the, the, the thing is, Closest style wins, which again is exactly like on the web. All right. So you might decide things. that is enrolled that you want that to be on the top. So you could go set that mm -hmm. at the actual label and then override the style, right? Yep. Absolutely. So, yeah, closest one. So, even, you know, if you, if that's, a, that's a great point. So, if I come down to, let's say, I do that, but I come all the way down here to that is enrolled, right? This guy, yeah, I could say, you know, vertical options is start, and there it is now up at the top. There. Or right. I can keep it centered because that's overriding the style because yes. it's closer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get any closer than that. <laughs> so this is kind of, uh, this function similar to just like CSS sheet, uh, files, right? Absolutely. This, it's almost exactly like CSS. Yep. Mm -hmm. cool. Okay. Now, another thing that you can do so these are affecting all grids all labels, all horizontal stack layouts. The other thing that we can do is we could actually key these. So we set a key and we give it a name, like grid.page, for example. <clears throat> this now does no longer apply to every single grid. It only applies to the ones that I specify this name. How we do that is we come over here and on this grid, we say style equals, now in curly braces, so curly braces basically means interpret this as code, if you will. I'm saying I want to access a static resource. Because remember, these are resources. Okay. <clears throat> static means it's just basically this, there's only one of them here. It's not changing. And when I hit space, look at that. It actually tells me which ones oh. apply to a grid. Okay. And so as soon as I do that, it's back to our margins and our spaces. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but nothing really seemed to change, did it? Okay. This is one of those cases where when you change something at the application level, you actually have to stop the application and rerun it to see the uh, effect. Okay. So it's one of those cases where I would actually have to shut down this application and rerun it in order for this style to take effect. So just something to note. Now, that we don't have to do it right now because it looks the same, but you get the idea. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> now, labels, entries, checkboxes, they already have kind of some styling to them already. That's because Microsoft gave us stylings and they put it under the resources styles. And in fact, the button, look at these, these have colors, don't they? Blue color. Uh, background and white foreground. So mm -hmm. where is all that coming from? 
Well, I'm glad you asked. There's two XAML files here, colors and styles. So the colors obviously have colors. They have them keyed, right? So just like we did before, we have a, a, a just like I did just a minute ago with the key, I gave them a certain name. We have solid color brushes, we have colors. So anyway, this now can be applied inside of the styles.xaml. So this is what's called a resource dictionary. So Robert was saying you could then take styles and move them from one you know, app to another. Yes, you could just take these files and move them from one to the other. Right? And you can, you, over, you can override those if you wanted to? You can absolutely. You can come in here and change anything you want. Okay? It's not like those are rebuilt, recreated when you build the app. They're just created when you create the project up front, right? Right. They're part of the built-in <laughs> template. Yep. yep. Okay. And then overriding, I like that word because that's exactly what I wanted to show you here. If you notice right up here, before... I put in all my styles. There's this merged dictionaries. And look at this. Resource dictionary. The source is coming from resources, styles, colors.xaml. And then right after it, styles.xaml. Okay. So I am saying that, hey, if there's anything that, if they had defined anything for a grid, I'm actually overriding it because I put these afterwards. If I had put these before those dictionaries, okay. Things could change. In fact, they did a little bit, didn't they? I don't know if you noticed it. Let's get that out and let's put that back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And then you can put your styles in your own style.xaml. Stick right. it in. Dot. It doesn't really matter where you put it, right? It doesn't have to be in styles. I personally would not put it in styles. Okay. I, would, I agree with you. I would want to add my own resource dictionary. Yeah. Okay. And so I would add a new item. And I go to .NET MAUI. And I would set select the yeah. .NET MAUI resource dictionary. And I always call, I, I call mine app styles mm -hmm. for this application. Mm -hmm. And then what I could do is I could take those ones that I had created here cut them out of here, put them into my app style.xaml. There we go. And then back here in the app.xaml, right, all I would have to do is make sure that mine comes after theirs. Voila. There you go. Great. So that to me it would be a best practice. I would highly recommend you do that. Keep things consistent from one app to the other. Yep. Okay. So. Pretty neat, though. I, I like this. I like this ability. It's very similar to CSS. So if you are familiar with HTML, this is not that different. Yeah, it's from that. Yeah. So. And you can, you, here, you're just starting with the basic things, padding and margins and, you know, location, uh, orientations, start small. Yep. And then you can add on more colors or add, more yeah, meaning. They actually more, have more fancy. Meaning. Yeah. So, yeah, Excellent. lots of stuff built in here. Now, this isn't the only thing that we can do, though, okay? Not just colors and, and then affecting those things. We can actually add additional resources as well, okay? So I could come into, in fact, let's go to my app styles here. And look at this. I can actually create a string, key it as a certain, you know, a name. And I can put AdventureWorks there. Well, if you remember, the main page, it had, I used to have AdventureWorks there. So now I could actually put this here. And instead of having to, you know, duplicate that over and over again, remember before I had it like in the shell and I had it on the uh, label. But see, I can now actually use a static resource re uh, referencing this string, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice. Okay. So now if I ever have to change that name, I only change it in one place. Okay. And then look down here, I have column spacing 10, row spacing 10, margin 10, padding 10. Well, how about adding a double default spacing for grid 10. And then all I have to do, right, is change this from 10 to a static resource default spacing for grid. 
And now if I ever want to change it, I change it in one place. That's nice. That is nice. So again, that's what I look at. It's one of these best practices again. You think about things that you're repeating. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you're repeating it, hey, let's try to extract that out into a resource. So Right. You Plus, you know what's going to happen. You specify it individually 10 times, then you change it, and you get nine of them right. And you forget uh -huh. one. And... Yep. Or maybe you misspelled it one place, so you're trying yeah. to do a global search in a place. You don't get it because it's misspelled. And, something. Yeah. and of course, you never find it. Your user does. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, great use of styles, uh, you know, keeping them all together creating your own resource dictionary. These are the things that I think that you should put into practice in your application. I yeah, love it. absolutely. I love it. This is a huge bang for not a big buck. Yeah. You've, you've already defined all these things. You're just centralizing it with a handful of extra tag names. And right. then the higher up you get it, the more it's used. That's really cool. And also what's nice is, in WPF, we didn't have those underlying styles without going into like blend or something and extracting the template. Mm -hmm. But Microsoft has now given us those styles right in that styles.xaml. So you can see all the triggers and a lot of fancy stuff in there. It's a great learning tool. Just going in, looking at what they did. Right. You know, definitely, you know, take a look at those and, and, you know, kind of learn from that. I would be hesitant to change that. I would, again, override it in your own app styles. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. next, we're going to, you know, start building more screens and then we'll start navigating between the different state screens as well. Cool. Good stuff. Yeah. Cool. So, um, since we're approaching our halfway point, where can people go to learn more about Maui and XAML? You mentioned documentation a couple of times, and that is presumably pretty good, right? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, actually, you know, and, and to tell you the truth, I like, um, I didn't used to, I will admit it, okay, but I never liked the Microsoft documentation. But if you actually go to the learn.microsoft.com and, and look up Maui now, it's actually really good. They did a good job. There's some great walkthroughs, some great tutorials in there. So to tell you the truth, I typically go to the Microsoft documentation now. I don't go to some sort of third party. Um, so they're doing a great job on documentation. So awesome. get better on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but you know, obviously, there's many other you know third party things out there, Plural Site, and you know Udemy and other places that you can learn as well. But uh, you know, I think for the UI piece, these 18 sessions are going to get you a lot of the way there. So. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Well, thank you once again, Paul. So uh, everyone tune in next time when we talk about navigating between pages. So till then, happy coding.